So then, yesterday we got even more details about Battlefield 2042 via a live stream that DICE ran on the Battlefield Twitch account. It wasn't heavily advertised, but there was some good nuggets of information in there. Various developers were interviewed about some of the main points that have been revealed so far, but as I said, there was some hidden information to give us a better understanding on some of the topics that we did actually need some more information on. So we're going to go through those in this video today. First up, we'll discuss bots and AI soldiers. Now, in the behind the scenes presentation that I got to see just before the reveal of Battlefield 2042, DICE stated that they would have an AI bots mode included in the game that could be used to try out new weaponry as a solo player or as part of a squad if you wanted to. And on your team, it would be filled up with AI and you would be facing off against a full team of AI soldiers. And I think it's up to you and three mates can go in as a squad and do it as co-op if you wanted to. You can mess around with all the lovely weaponry and the vehicles and the gadgets without fear of being crashed into somebody by a helicopter and ruining your day. It was also labelled as a mode for players who perhaps weren't as comfortable with Battlefield 2042 right away and they just wanted a place to learn the ropes. That's pretty cool. However, in a document released by EA after the Battlefield stream yesterday, it was further stated that these AI bots will in fact also be in public multiplayer matches and they'll be used to fill up any empty slots on each team in that server. Now Battlefield players will know that previous games with the 32 versus 32 player cap, often you'd have a couple of empty slots in each server per team because players would drop out mid-match and then those slots would be filled up by other players connecting in. Now however, those slots are going to be filled by AI bots and I'm assuming those bots will then disappear when a real player connects to the server and takes the slot away. Now the rationale for this feature is pretty obvious in one way, it keeps matches completely full, but if you dive a little bit deeper, you realize how important a feature like this could be in regions around the world that are simply less populated than others. For previous Battlefield titles, just as an example, I know that many players in Australia, they often struggled to get into servers that were completely full throughout the day because there were just less people in those regions playing the game. Battlefield 2042 is going to try and assist this issue, probably not going to completely fix it, but it will help the problem by keeping servers full with AI bots and simulating real players, which we then assume will be replaced by real players when they start to connect to the game and they start playing. Next up is destruction. Now I'm going to be honest, once again in this live stream, the topic was not really spoken about in great detail. And when it was mentioned, it was within the context of the tornado map changing event and the physics engine that DICE will be using for it. Here's a clip from Oscar Gabrielson. Wouldn't it be cool if we could throw like a real time tornado onto the battlefield that could turn everything kind of upside down and cause massive destruction. And I think everyone's sitting there kind of nodding. We looked over at the tech team and they're like, oh, are we supposed to make this work? Uh, and then kind of a year later, we have that first prototype. And I remember us showing it to other team members like, okay, but that's pre-rendered, right? Just has to be fake. Can't look that like that. And we were like, yep, it works. As you can see, it's just a very small mention here. However, Dan Berlin does go into a bit more detail on the tornado specifically, stating that its path across the map is completely random, and sometimes, a bit like in previous Battlefield games, the map event might not happen at all. One of the things that I really love about, you know, the tornado is the f like just physics are fun in games, right? And this is a big kind of like physics entity just moving across this, the map, and you don't know where it's going to go. It doesn't go in the same path every time. Um, you don't even know if it's going to show up, to be honest. So when it comes to destruction, we still don't really have a huge amount of detail. And that, to me, is a little bit concerning, because in EA's own press release for Battlefield 2042, one of the describing phrases used was game-changing destruction. We still don't really know too much about it, other than what the developers are telling us. And I actually feel like, at the moment, EA and DICE are just holding their cards close to their chest. They're talking about this map changing event and mentioning how it's going to cause massive destruction and then they're not really showing what that destruction looks like. Maybe it's not fully finalized yet and they haven't worked out the exact details of what it's going to do. But they're not talking about other elements of destruction that perhaps we expected them to talk about, like blowing a hole in a wall with an RPG or smashing out the side of a building by crashing a tank into it or using C4 to blow a crater into the ground that you could use for cover or something like that. 
We've heard next to nothing so far on these other elements of destruction. And to me, those are the more enjoyable parts of destruction in the Battlefield games. It's the player controlled stuff. It's that emergent gameplay that doesn't really ever happen the same way in another match that you play. So what I'm really looking forward to now is EA Play in July. Hopefully, that's the place where we might find out more about what kind of destruction we can really expect in Battlefield 2042. At the moment, they're only really talking about the huge scale stuff and not the, um, the lower scale stuff, I guess you could say. Now, next up is specialists. This has been a very polarizing topic within the community since it was announced, as it's a bit of a replacement to the classic classes that we know and love from previous Battlefield games. Information has been quite patchy on the implementation after the reveal, and I've seen lots of people simply just say that they're not really sure how the structure is going to work because the information they've got is not very complete. In the live stream, Dan Boleyn sought to clarify this issue by stating that the classes, in essence, are still there in Battlefield 2042, but instead, they're more categories now. And within those categories, there are a bunch of different roles. So instead of just picking Medic or Recon, you now pick a Specialist, which is specifically tailored to operate in a specific role within that category. A lot of players chose their class based on the, uh, the primary weapon that was available. Meaning you wouldn't, uh, you didn't choose necessarily a recon because of the gadgetry, but you actually chose a recon because you got the bolt action sniper rifles, and you didn't choose um, your class because you wanted to play a certain role. So that was the thing we wanted to kind of target with this change specifically. Uh, we wanted to bring the game into a space that when you choose which specialist to play with, you go like, okay, I want to play this particular role. So what we've done is that basically you have what we the, the traditional class, say recon, is more of a category now. And underneath that category, you have multiple specialists that, that, that have, has a gameplay role that is a recon gameplay role. That, to me, is a better explanation. But there is one other thing that caused some concern about the specialists, and that was them having their own unique gadget, which is tailored to their role, and a trait that helps them in that role as well. But it wasn't clear about what the second equipable gadget was going to be for each specialist, because as we all know, classes in previous Battlefield games had access to two gadgets, and that seems to be clear that they do have two gadgets based on the HUD in-game. It's now been confirmed that there is a second gadget slot for each specialist, and those specialists will be able to pick from open gadgets, as they're being called. These are gadgets that any of the specialists can use, they're not locked to one specific one. Here's Dan Boleyn explaining that. But what we're also doing to kind of um, uh, to, to bring this even further in terms of unlocking the sandbox, is that we're saying that, take Casper for example, he's a recon type of specialist. His particular gadget that he uses, that only he can use, is the recon drone. Um, but aside from the recon drone, Casper can bring a shotgun, a sniper rifle, an SMG, an LMG, whatever you want to put on Casper, you can put on Casper. You can put a rocket launcher on Casper to 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 um, to to couple with the uh, the recon drone. You can put as a throwable. You can equip him with C4. So we get away from that space as well, where as we kind of seen in previous games, where uh, on certain maps that were vehicle heavy, you just saw pretty much one class being played, the one that can counter vehicles. But now you choose your gameplay role, and then we have a. A, a, a whole array of open gadgetry that you can just freely choose from so we, we see a better diversity in terms of game, gameplay styles uh, across all our maps when we're playing the game now this for me clears up the specialist setup confusion but it does actually introduce a little bit of concern around gameplay balance in the gameplay trailer a lot of players had chosen to take an rpg now likely that's because the map they were playing on hourglass is very vehicle heavy and countering those is done best with something that can damage a vehicle or destroy it. However, this may end up with, I don't know, 128 players running RPGs on certain maps because they want to take down vehicles. That doesn't sound good for balance. And of course, I'm looking at an extreme example here, but in theory, it could actually happen. So it remains to be seen how this will actually play out. But at least right now, we have a better picture on specialists and how they will be implemented. Now we do have some more of that information. And then there was a mention of Hazard Zone that I found really, really interesting. This is a separate game mode that will be available in Battlefield 2042. It's all about high stakes squad play. 
Now, aside from both Daniel and Oscar outright stating yet again that this is not a battle royale mode, Daniel did give us a touch more detail, stating that choices around weaponry and specialists, that will be super important in Hazard Zone, thanks to the tight squad play that it requires. Yeah, Hazard Zone is really something that's taking kind of the superpowers or dice, the battlefield formula to a new level. It's a high stakes squad based uh, experience. It's not your battle royale that you might be expecting. It's something new and a bit more contemporary, I'd say. I'd say so. Uh, um, but I think it is important to call out that this is not a battle royale mode. Mm -hmm. um, it's something that we're building for Battlefield. It's something that we're building that is ours. But it is really built on those mechanics, those high stakes mechanics that really builds tension as you play and gets you like, you know, those sweaty palms moments when you're just like... But it's also then, you know, combined with Squad play. I mean, we are a squad-based team play shooter, and I'd say there's no other space um, within 2042 where the choices you make in terms of what I choose to bring and what my friends choose to bring, what specialist is my friend playing, what weapon is my friend playing, what gadgetry is my friend playing, that has such an incredibly high importance in Hazard Zone when you're playing this game. So really, really tight squad play, um, really, really... Um, uh, Tight communication is important, um, and then built around those uh, that tension builder, high stakes type of gameplay. The mention there of building tension as you play, thanks to the high stakes mechanics, that actually sounds like battle royale. But then they've said it's not battle royale. So what could it actually be? My theory here, and this is just a theory, I don't have any information, is that Battlefield is going to take on Escape from Tarkov. You're going to deploy as a squad into a combat zone against other squads. You'll be scavenging for high tier loot. You'll be completing missions and challenges and then taking on other squads when you run into them and then extracting with your equipment gained if you survive. If you don't survive, you get wiped out and you have to start again. That would certainly provide the tension and the sweaty hands moments that Daniel was referring to and would in a sense feel like Battle Royale since you're fighting against other teams of players to survive but it's not Battle Royale because it's not last team standing. You're making the choice to extract and choose to leave the battle zone when you want to. I don't know. That's just my theory. I don't have any information. I've just been thinking about it and that would be pretty cool, I think. So that's the added detail we were able to glean from the live stream. According to DICE, we'll be seeing more of these as well as blog posts moving into the future. So we will learn more about the game. But right now we're all looking to July 22nd. It's about a month away for the next look at Battlefield 2042 at EA Play Live, and we'll be looking at the DICE LA love letter to the fans that's been mentioned quite a few times already. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already for more Battlefield 2042 videos and hopefully full proper gameplay in the future. I would love it if I could get my hands on the game and show you guys what it's really like. And I just want to say massive thanks to all the support on the 2042 content so far. I'm going to admit, I was very scared that I'd been on Warzone for so long that people might not pick up the 2042 content, but in fact, it's been incredible on the pickup. So many people leaving nice comments about going back to Battlefield. It is pretty awesome to be making videos on this franchise again. But thanks very much for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one.